So I did my undergrad from India, uh, uh, from Mumbai University. And uh, I think I always wanted to do my MS uh, right from uh, my graduation, uh, undergraduation. And uh, I think right now I did my uh, graduation from Carnegie Mellon. And I am currently working at uh, Instacart, which is uh, right now one of the unicorns over here. Uh, so that's uh, that's brief about me and uh, and uh, to give you an overview of my profile, I have seven years of uh, experience. So uh, prior to doing my masters, so I was one of those guys who actually uh, you know left a, a lucrative job to come for an MS. Uh, going back to my undergraduation, uh, I was uh, actually in a college called uh, Lokmanatilak uh, College of Engineering, that's uh, in Navi Mumbai and was part of Mumbai University. So I was doing my undergraduation from uh, Mumbai University in tele uh, electronics and telecommunication. Uh, and uh, when when uh, it came to uh, doing my undergrad, I came from a, uh, I fr came from a Srimadhi Slochna Devi Singhania school. So, you know, for me, uh, doing the undergrad uh, from uh, Mumbai University uh, itself was a journey that was quite different uh, because, uh, you know, uh, my college, uh, it was really known for mechanical engineering, but I was doing electronics and telecommunication engineering over there. Uh, it was a good four years where I did a lot of things in my college over there. Uh, I was always planning my master's over there. Like my third year, I was uh, doing words. I was doing my, uh, my uh, you know, uh, GRE preparations. Uh, but then, uh, you know, when, when it came to my final year, I was like, do I really want to go for a master's right now? Uh, which field I want to do my master's in? So these were like uh, those questions that I had in my mind. And uh, what I really did is uh, I kind of uh, decided to hold back on my master's after graduation. And I actually went uh, to do my job uh, in uh, Tata Consultancy Services. So for the first six uh, six months, uh, I was actually training with them. I started my job over there. Uh, I got trained in SAP. I was working uh, over there. And then uh, I think for after three and a half years, I started working in Capgemini. Uh, so that's, that's my journey uh, of working uh, in the industry. And uh, so in, in, in my seven years that I was working, I was mainly working in uh, SAP. So that's that's about my work life. When when I was deciding on the kind of college that I want to go on the program that I want to do, uh, I'll give you a brief uh, when, when I was speaking about my basic profile. So my third year engineering, I was actually planning uh, to do my master's already. Uh, but that time, uh, you know, I was holding back because of two or three reasons. One is uh, whether I'm, I'm choosing the right degree. Uh, do I have the right finances in place? And uh, do I really want to do it? So these were like two or three questions that I really had in my mind. Uh, so that's that's when I started, uh, you know, uh, preparing for my GRE. And then uh, it kind of hit me that, you know, probably I should take some experience, uh, understand where I want to go in life. And then uh, probably, you know, uh, I should take the step of doing my master's. So coming to the point of how I zeroed in on uh, the MIS program and Carnegie Mellon uh, in, in particular, uh, what happened is uh, I was kind of working for like six years and then it kind of hit me that, you know, uh, I want to uh, be be working uh, in a better place. I want to be uh, doing a better program for my master's and uh, what program would actually uh, give me both of those things. Uh, you know, the flexibility of choosing the subjects that I want to learn, uh, uh, the the path that I want to choose, the career that it will give me were the things that I was looking at uh, when I was choosing my master's program. Uh, so then uh, then I started researching, you know, what is close to what I'm doing. And, and the kind of job that I was doing was a mix of uh, a managerial uh, and a technical uh, background that was required. So uh, I think what I really did is uh, then I zeroed in on whether I want to do a CS or an MIS. Uh, and, and then I realized that I don't want to really go uh, deep technical uh, what makes sense is to have some kind of uh, managerial uh, background as well uh, when doing my master's. And that's how I, I kind of decided that, you know, I want to do an MIS and then uh, came the search for the best MIS programs. So I kind of, uh, you know, took out a list of uh, MIS programs that are offered in the US 
and the flexibility of all these programs. Uh, so what I, I kind of saw was uh, the best MIS programs. Uh, you know, there are uh, quite a few universities that offer good programs. You have UC Berkeley, you have CNU, uh, you have uh, U University of Cincinnati, and uh, a couple of others. Uh, so I kind of, uh, you know, had this uh, list that I created, uh, out of which uh, some were ambitious, some were, you know, safe for me, and some were like uh, semi-ambitious for me. And I kind of applied to like five or six of them, and then, uh, then I I just waited for them to come back uh, with offers. So that's how I went about, uh, you know, getting my uh, zeroing in on my master's program. The moment people got admits, I think uh, we had a WhatsApp group created. I think that's the normal norm nowadays that you know students who get admits they they normally try to get in touch with each other. And what I was really seeing is that you know all of us were really really trying to scramble for finances. Uh, we had you know multiple uh, places that we were exploring to get our finances from, and I think uh, uh, we we kind of explored all those options. And what I really found was. Uh, Prodigy was giving us loan uh, without collaterals, and that kind of really helped. And that was one of the things that I was really looking for uh, in my financing option, that I don't have to, you know, uh, bet on my uh, past property for getting a future degree. So uh, that's where I think uh, uh, Prodigy made a good offer, and I kind of went for it uh, for getting these finances. And I kind of, uh, you know. Uh, told my group about my experience and the way I got my loan. And I think uh, a lot of my friends and my colleagues in the in the university uh, were, all, were also uh, borrowers from Prodigy Finance. And uh, they kind of, uh, um, they, in, including me, uh, kind of uh, thank Prodigy for helping us get that degree from Carnegie Mellon. Coming to student life, I think uh, you want to reduce um, what you spend when you are as, uh, living as a student. Uh, it depends. I mean, there are some people who who are okay with spending uh, when they are students, but if you if you really want to reduce uh, the amount that you are spending, I think uh, you have to look at uh, the the living expense uh, of the universities that you are applying to. And I think uh, uh, with me, what really happened is uh, I kind of knew what the expenses would be, uh, and uh, looking at uh, the expenses uh, from my previous batch, I actually connected with people from my previous batch. To understand, you know how much they were paying uh, for the rent, uh, for um, uh, the food, and uh, you know various other expenses that they would have monthly. And I had a rough figure in mind calculated uh, regarding uh, the amount that I could spend or potentially spend in a month, and uh, that multiplied by twelve plus. Uh, you know uh, this one thing that I did not do, and uh, that's why I'm advising is that you should also uh, factor in like three or four months extra months uh, because uh, there could be a possibility where you know uh, after graduation you might not have got a job and you still have to uh, get those living expenses in place so uh, that's that's uh, regarding finances and as, as a student life I think uh, Carnegie Mellon was crazy so uh, we we kind of did not have much time to uh, you know really uh, enjoy the student life but it was it was more of assignments day in and day out uh, you know, there were there were nights where I was actually staying in the university, uh, completing my assignments. Uh, not to you know uh, dissuade people who are going from Carnegie Mellon, but that's something that you have to prepare for if you're going for a one-year program because it's very fast-paced, and you have to uh, you know uh, be able to complete uh, a lot of credits and a lot of subjects uh, in one and a half month. Uh, that is a, a mini semester and a semester. So. So I think that's that's something that people should really pre prepare for when they're going for uh, masters. I think there are ch uh, chiller programs that, uh, like the two-year programs, you have lesser a number of credits and lesser number of subjects that you're taking per semester. So those programs, uh, if if you're not looking to you know cram cramp up a lot of things, uh, are best suited uh, for your student life. Uh, so I think that's that's one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're uh, you know. Uh, also basing your decision uh, also you should base your decision on so uh, that's that's some some part of my student life at Carnegie Mellon uh, and and particularly I think uh, even in those busy days we, we still manage to you know enjoy some moments uh, but not not a lot so
yeah uh, so coming to job i think it's it's a it's a journey for a different journey for everyone uh, that is what i would say uh, so there are a lot of people uh, who would get a job quite early into the program there would be people who would take some more months but i think overall uh, you should have a you know strategy of how you want to go about searching for a job so i think uh, coming to a job i what i really felt was uh, there were a lot of campus recruitments that happened at carnegie mellon so we would have uh, fairs where companies would come down to carnegie mellon and uh, in those fairs we could represent ourselves for the job uh, that was one one place second we had a good placement office uh, so that kind of really helped uh, you know getting yourself prepared for interviews going over strategies of how you would apply for a job and and uh, coming especially to the job in the us i think it's it's quite different from uh, how you go about interviews in india so i think in india it's it's kind of a very uh, uh, you know sandwich process i would say because you you go in and in, in couple of hours uh, you you already know whether you want to join the job or not and uh, in the us it's not like that uh the job uh you know the process can go as long as 3 or 4 months uh and uh, they they always the interviews are uh, scheduled in like multiple days and with multiple people and and then uh, they decide on whether they want to take you or not so uh having strategies for all those interviews really helps so uh, also going into the interviews i think you would have one round uh, uh where where they would you know take up uh an initial introduction then they would go into a technical round and then uh, there would be uh, several other behavioral rounds and technical rounds uh, that would happen off off site and on site so you should have strategies for each one of them uh, and uh, regardless of uh, you know what you do uh, uh, you have to be uh, at your top game in all these these rounds so that's that's something that i really saw over your year uh, when i was interviewing and uh, initially i did not have a strategy but uh, i think when it came to december i kind of started uh, you know uh, narrowing down on the kind of roles that i wanted to apply for and uh, the the kind of jobs and the locations that i was looking for uh, so that really helped me you know uh, come down to uh, a few companies that i was really looking for and the few kind of jobs that i was looking for i think uh, teaching assistantship uh, is is only for people who can actually manage it in a one year program so uh, especially when it comes to a one year program i would you know really uh, ask people to really think about whether they want to do it or not because that really essentially means that you are eating up into your sleep uh, that a lot of people don't want to uh, do away with uh, and and uh, coming to the uh, the assistantship itself i think it was a great uh, experience because uh, you kind of work with uh, some some of the best professors and you kind of uh, build a network with them so um, you you kind of get help from them uh, when it comes to uh, job placements and uh, i did not really have that strategy in mind when i was applying for it I, uh, so my first job was uh, as a teaching assistantship was with with one of these professors who uh, wanted help with his uh, his uh, back end stuff and uh, it was not even a ta ta job particularly so uh, i was not even actually speaking to students uh, but i was actually helping the professor so so uh, and it was not even related to my subject uh, so so it it all depends you know, for teaching assistantship i think you have to uh, you know be in contact with a lot of students uh, Uh, that uh, around you so that you know what kind of jobs are open uh, for particularly for me i think i got my job in my second semester uh, not even in my first semester uh, so so if you are really looking to you know get job from the first semester itself uh, i would really recommend connecting with the professors uh, networking with uh, your uh, current batch of students that is your seniors uh, that would really help you to find out what kind of jobs are there on the campus and what kind of jobs you want to do uh i think uh, you know working at a startup it, itself is uh, uh, it's a different experience because you have a lot of smart people working around you uh, people who are you know uh, just there working uh, you know uh, with with their talent because i see uh, people who are who are really talented and 
can write thousand lines of code uh, within like two or three days and that's something that i had only heard of but i had not seen and that's something that i'm seeing in the startup and it's it's a it's a really fast moving company so uh, working at startups is you wouldn't have time uh, to you know learn but you have to still learn and be very fast in doing that because uh, today you are learning one technology and tomorrow you know uh, you could be adapting another technology depending on uh, the needs of uh, the startup so I, i think it's a great experience because i am i am kind of learning things new things i'm kind of um, as as a uh, as a person who's experienced kind of bringing in processes also in, into the startup and that's kind of working out really well working in a startup Uh, well i think uh, instacart is uh, a grocery uh, delivery uh, and uh, shopping app and uh, they are doing really really well in their space i think right now uh, as a company we have uh, uh, one competitor if i'm not wrong in the us and uh, we are kind of expanding uh, we have actually expanded uh, throughout the us uh, when it comes to the company itself uh, working over here i'm working as a solution architect uh my role uh, entails uh, you know bringing in new retailers on board so we are actually we have a product uh, that we integrate with uh, retailers and that's uh, that's my job of you know um, making sure that uh, the uh, the retailers are on boarded and uh, are able to use our products so so that's uh, that's uh, when i when i say uh, what i uh, i am doing day in and day out uh my 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 day would look like you know a lot of meetings with uh, the retailers uh, doing a lot of technical stuff uh, i have to coordinate with the engineers in my office i have to coordinate uh, with a lot of stakeholders including product managers and uh, uh, the engineers uh, in my team so um, i i would be in a meeting and then i would come out i would have another meeting with my engineers i would give them uh, you know um things that need to be worked on uh, prioritize them for them and uh, once the work is done i kind of coordinate with uh, my retailers to get the testing uh, for those those products or features that we release so that's that's something that i'm doing uh, almost uh, day in and day out at instacart so yeah that's uh, that's my life for in in instacart